So this brings me to your recent interview Mm -hmm. where you went all in. (laughs) Yeah, well, it it felt all in because it was the first wave, but there's more. (laughs) But yeah, it it was all in. Now, you brought up some interesting points, which a lot of people have issues with. Mm -hmm. The first point is, is that Kaepernick is a mixed kid that grew up in a white adopted family and does not understand the struggle of a typical black male. So go ahead and expand on that. Yeah, one, um, saying someone is mixed race is matter of fact. Um, If you take it as a negative connotation or positive connotation, that's on you. But mixed race is a matter of fact. So I said his bio, and it's amazing. If you read me my bio, I'm not disturbed. I don't have a negative connotation. I'm not outraged by reading my bio in any capacity because it's who I am. I just told everybody who he was, and everybody went that way, which told me about what they were thinking, one. However, a mixed-race guy who is raised by two white parents from Wisconsin to Central California where he lived, I think it was Trulock, um, is in this situation where I said, I'm not disqualifying him for leading this cause. I also said, it's not about race. I'm not talking about his black card, which I don't even think exists. I hate when people say you're black card. I'm not pulling his black card, he's black. I never even talked about him being black or not, he's black. I also didn't talk about his complexion, which a lot of people are talking about. Mixed race, light skin. Y'all don't know any dark mixed race people? I do. So I don't know where that came from as well. I said this all because people are blind to what the conditions are in their world. There is a war going on, and they have combined forces, and they coexist only in one place. And the war is race and class. And now I'm going to take you back to what I studied growing up. I'm a sociology major, psychology minor, all in on this. And it's amazing that people keep thinking that I'm talking about his black card. I'm talking about the condition card. And you know where they combine race and class in this world? The lowest rung of race as deemed by society and the lowest rung of class deemed by society in the hood in the ghetto, the lowest rung. Now, lowest rung comes from the one drop rule. What is the one drop rule, smart people out there? Do you know that there was a time that black people weren't allowed to pick exactly who they were in terms of ethnicity? They were actually told and couldn't fight back. Started in slavery, started in the South, Jim Crow era, reinforced this. And it was a racial discrimination. And lowest rung means, hey, you're half white and half black. But guess what we're going to do? Deem you to the subordinate group, the lower group. And that was a mechanism that slave owners used so they didn't have to be accountable and responsible for the kids that were mixed because the kids were deemed black. Y'all ain't even keep, y'all ain't even peeping this. But y'all talking about black cars still. So damn young in their minds. So anyway, I bring up the conditions because that's what the cause is about. The cause is about systemic oppression. It's about police brutality. It's about racial discrimination. And there are levels to this, y'all. See, I am a person that started from the bottom, now I'm here, and have gained the perspective of dealing with the visible weight of race, but the invisible weights of class. And in class, there there are indicators now that says that class is the greatest, most potent indicator of your success in life. Well beyond race now. Why is that? Because this world already told us what it's about. This country certainly did. It's capitalist. They said it's about money. So y'all don't believe me? Fine, do your own research. But let me give it to you in a nutshell. When I check Colin Kaepernick on his qualifications, I'm checking him because his lane is being measured by this cause, which is talking about the weight of this world. The world, when you're black, when you're poor, and when you're in the hood, is the heaviest by the system and by perception. Now, you will never escape being black in this world. Duh, it's your complexion, it's who you are. 
So the war on racism that all these race baiters keep going on and getting clicks and retweets and likes about just is disturbing to me because they're leading my people in the wrong direction, saying, hey, this is a war we can never win because we're always going to be black, but try and fight it. So all they do is sensationalize race. And not a damn one of them, it seems like, is talking about class. Whereas class eats its own. Why is the middle class shrinking? Why is the gap between the haves and the have-nots growing? Why is the economic disparity between blacks and whites the same it is today as it was in 1970? You want to know why? Because nobody's looking at it through the right lens. Now, there are smart people that talk about this, but they don't get mainstream. The class angle. Do you know that if you are a middle class white kid, you have an advantage over a middle class, a lower class white kid? Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder why. Why, why would class matter if it's all about race? Do you know that if, if you're born poor as a black person, half the times you're going to die poor, 50%. You know, if you, if you were born into a situation of success, it begets and it breeds success, even for black people. So this is a conversation that needs to be morphed that I was trying to illustrate. But look, I do a sports show. <laughs> like, I can't go this hard and heavy on it, but I'm going to give you some of the key guidelines to start to understand that this is deeper than just your color. Because we have this myopic view that the only issues plaguing us is police brutality in our encounters. It's really myopic. It's really saddening that people are not talking about the invisible chains. Because when you are really feeling the full weight of this systemic oppression, guess what you feel? Your life expectancy is reduced. Your health in terms of health care is reduced. When you talk about your employment opportunities, they're reduced. When you're talking about incarceration rates, they go up. When you talk about the criminal element around you, it goes up. Now I ask everybody, because I'm not going to bore y'all to death. Did Colin Kaepernick experience that? The full weight? No, he didn't. And that didn't disqualify him. But his missteps and his miscalculations and his lack of scope, at least through what he's saying in leadership, is why I finally got to this inflection point where I had to say something.